Hi everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and we're back with Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. And today we're playing with Strength of Stone, the other mono red deck in Duels of the Planeswalker 2012. Now I've heard a lot of people say this is the worst deck in Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. And as I take a mulligan, um, I'm not going to outright agree with that. I think there are worse decks. I think the Apex Predators green solo deck is pretty bad. Um, and yeah, this deck is not amazing, but it has some interesting facets to it. And I've seen a lot of people with their changes that they've made to deck it are, you know, they take out all the really heavy creatures, or they take out all the expensive stuff. And I, I personally think that's kind of wrong. I don't think that this deck has the tools to be very fast. So I took out a lot of the faster cards and tried to make it more of a long haul kind of deck. Because you have these, these tools in the deck that are like you know end game here like you know you have the uh... what is this called spire barrage alright five mana deal shit loads of damage it does at least five damage to target creature or player and it's automatically better than lava axe because when you have five mana obviously you can do at least five damage because you have five mountains five 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 um, so I think that's an interesting card. You got these stupid goblins. They're pretty bad. I would have taken them out, but I don't really have anything to replace them with in the deck. Um, so there you go. And I'm playing against someone here who's playing the uh, Ancient Depths. Here we go again. Another goblin on the board. Act of Treason. Great card. Three mana. You control one of the creatures for one turn. Now you might think, oh, it's just one turn, right? But a lot of times people leave just one creature untapped to block your guys. So if you can steal it, then you can get through, you know, they have no blockers. We got Flowstone Overseer here, another amazing card. One thing you want to remember, general rule of magic, you know, there are cases where this is not the case, but you want to always play your permanents after your attack phase because you don't know what's going to happen during the attack. Now, yes, in Duels Little Planeswalkers, you kind of know what your opponent's deck is. But, you know, let's say you attack and he kills one of your creatures, or you attack and something happens, he does some kind of instant during your turn, you know, that could change what you decide to do, you know, with your O. Okay, he just quit. Um, he didn't have any land. I don't know what the hell happened there. Okay, well, here's another thing. It's very important when you're playing this game, and Magic in general, that you really think about the hand that you end up taking. Now I'm going to be playing someone here with the Artifact, uh, the White Equipment deck. I don't even remember what it's called. Um, which is a very good deck. Easily one of the top three or four decks in the game. Um, then again, there's only ten decks, so I don't know if that's saying too much. And I took a mulligan there because there's nothing I could do with that turn, with that hand. And I got the Flowstone Axe, I believe that's what it's called. Dark Steel. Dark Steel Axe. Indestructible Axe. Um, which is cool because it can't be destroyed. Which kind of given. Now I have two of the uh, Rock Slide Elementals, which are guys that every time something dies, they get bigger. Which is very cool because it forces an interesting mechanic on your opponent. It's like, you know, they can. There may not be anything they can do about it directly, especially the white deck, and they just kind of have to wait and watch this thing get bigger. They have to make combat. They may be afraid of committing to combat, knowing that if there's an exchange of two creatures, your other creature is going to get bigger. Is it the most powerful game uh, card in the game? Not necessarily, but it just, again, um, it just puts your opponent in an interesting position. So I'm going to drop one of these on the board. It's 1 1. And just when anything else dies, it's going to get bigger. So one thing dies, it's 2-2. Two, two. Ten things dies, it's 11-11. Eleven, eleven. Um, got the axe here. Now, here's where you want to start thinking, what am I going to do in my next turn? Am I going to equip the Darksteel axe and attack? Or am I going to play the other creature? Um, in most cases, you want to get another permanent into play. Because, um, I don't know, it just allows you to, you know, now you're going to have two creatures on the board and they're going to have zero. So in most cases, that would be, you know, okay get another permanent on the board. In this case though, that's, uh, blah, what am I talking about? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I figure I can always equip the Dark Steel um, Axe on the next turn. It's more important to get two of these guys into play. And another reason to get two of these guys into play is that if I draw some burn, he plays a creature, I burn it, then both of them will get the bonus instead of just one of them. Um, Alright, he's going to play, oh wow, okay, this is going to be annoying. Um, Alright, he's going to get the Pernin Blade, whatever the hell it's called, that makes it plus one plus one for each creature he controls and now it's a giant fucking monster all right that's a big deal it's scary all right it's a little scary it's, i i won't pretend that i am not a little intimidated by having five four on the other end of the board i got this guy i have no clue what he is what he's called he uh he has like forest walk or something not a great card three for two three but a lot of cards in this deck are just like not that great but i'm going to equip the dark steel axe on here make him have four power all right so he's a four three so he can basically block this guy with no problem of course if he plays another creature which is more than likely because he's got five cut four cards in hand um yes conquer oh fuck 
Fuck me. Alright, five mana, he gets six white tokens. Alright, wow. Wow. Alright, so... Alright! So... Ha ha! Ha! Oh my god. Alright. So he's attacked for like, I don't know, six plus whatever, five, ten, eleven, something like that. Um, I'm just gonna throw this guy away. Just gonna throw him away. I don't think I can win this game anymore, but you see at least by throwing this guy away, these each of these guys got a little bigger, so now they're 2-2. Two, two. But I'm in a pretty bad position because, okay, this is a good position. So now I drew the one thing in this deck that can kill artifacts. I don't remember what the hell it's called. It's like uh, Oxida Scrap Melter, 4 for 3-3. Three, three. Before you choose the artifact, because he's got two on the board, I just want to make sure I zoom in. There's absolutely the right artifact. There you go. Get rid of the pen and blade. Um, and now the board position, not so bad again. I'm going to equip here. And I'm throwing it on this guy so that, because I don't really want to attack with the rock sliders until they're a little bigger. But I can force, you know, an unfavorable position again where, okay, he might have to throw away three or four of his little tokens to block my uh, scrap melter. Which, which he wouldn't want to do because that would force, like, you know, both of my rock sliders to get gigantic. Um... Yeah, you know, this deck is it's not an amazing deck. It does some interesting things. It's got some interesting mechanics in it. And these uh, Rock Slider guys, they have... Uh, is that right? Am I calling it? Yeah, the Rock Slide Elementals. Oh, okay, now he's got a rest. Great. Okay, so that guy's not going to be able to attack or block or do anything. Um, the Rock Slide Elementals... Um, and he's got the Spyglass, which is a very interesting card because it can force interesting blocking um, situations. So he's going to attack here, he's going to block here. His guy's like 4-3 or something. And if it's blocked, then he gets to draw two cards. So i got to choose. Is it worth giving him two cards and taking away one of his guys um, and not taking all the damage? In this case, I think it... Mm, yeah... I don't know. Let's just take the damage. It's not that much damage. Um, this is the thing, you give your opponent a lot of card advantage if you block the Spyglass, which I guess is the good thing about the Spyglass. Um, now let's see, what I want to do here is attack, and again, the reason I didn't play the creature first, if you play the creature first, he knows that you're going to have a disposable creature, so he's willing to take the damage. Now I play the creature, so after he decided not to block, and now I'm going to equip the axe to it, so that I can have a throwaway blocker, basically, with a little more power. So again, you want to make these important decisions after combat. Um, and right now, I would say my board position is pretty bad. I got one card in hand, he's got two. He's got all these guys out. If he gets that thing that gives them all plus one, plus one, that, you know, that soldier guy, the soldier boy, soldier boy. Um, but if he tries to tell me or tell him or anything like that, um, I'm going to be in trouble. There's a lot of cards in this deck. If he gets another arrest, I'm in trouble. If he gets some fucking giant angel out, I'm in trouble. That's kind of annoying. All right, yes, he's got the little the hook master who's going to tap my only blocker. He still can't really do a committed attack. He's not going to attack with these little 1-1 one -one guys because if he does, he's just throwing them away into the rock slide elementals. Um, but now, okay, I just can't do anything with this thing. Um, oh, wow. Jesus Christ, that's annoying. All right, so he's just going to attack with everything. Um, some people would block the 4-3. I am instead going to block the 1-1s one because, again, it'll pump the, the rock slides and you take a permanent off the board. Yes, I take the extra damage, but I'm down to 7 life. But one thing a lot of newbies do is they just treat their life like it's the most important thing in the game. Now, don't get me wrong. Life is important, obviously, you know, like the tip says, it's okay to have one life if your opponent has zero. But it's a little more nuanced than that. Like... What's really important in the game is having control of the board. You know, it doesn't matter if you have one life if your opponent can literally not draw anything that could win him the game. So you want to keep a board position that's going to like, you know, now if I attack here, I'm pretty much screwed. I really need to keep all my blockers open. And notice I have two lands in my hand. I, I left the one to the last second hoping you wouldn't notice if I play it. But I could have played this land turns ago by keeping it in my hand so he might think that I have some kind of important, super important card. I could just play it, but if I have no cards in hand, he's going to be like, oh, Wingspan TT can't do anything to me. If he thinks that this is Deadly Burn, if he thinks that this is um, Fault Line or anything like that, he's just going to be a little more cautious in general. Now he's going to attach the little Spyglass to this thing and attack to try to draw out. Now if I were him, I would really just attack with everything again because he might lose most of his creatures, but it's going to force, you know, now I'm just going to block. Yes, it'll give him two cards, but he only has three untapped lands left, so I figure whatever, I'll pump my guys, get one of his tokens on the board because is that the best decision? I don't know if it's the best decision, but I'm the one making the video, so, you know, whatever. That's just what I'm going to do. 
He's gonna get another one of these trusty machetes. And it's funny how many of these trusty machetes you can equip. Like, you can have like five trusty machetes on one creature. Like, I just just imagine some soldier going battlefield, and he's somehow really deadly because he's carrying five extra machetes on him. Like, you know, these guys already have their machetes and their swords or whatever, and now he's going to battle. Like, ah, oh, well, I could kill a dragon in one hit because I'm clunking around five fucking machetes with me. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way in real life, but I guess magic never really made sense in that way. You, I mean, you can equip a machete to a wall, and it makes it more deadly. But, um, here we go. He passed the second main phase already, right? Yeah, he's just getting this giant guy, right? Yes, all right, two of these things. Plus four, plus two, so it's like six, four. Or no, he's just going to spread it around a little bit. All right, so he's got two guys. I don't know why he did that, but I'm in a very... Oh! Ho-ho! Fault line, motherfuckers! So what's Fault Line do? It's like Earthquake, it's instant. X and two red, deals X damage to each creature and each player. Now I'm at seven life, so I'm at a, I'm a disadvantage here. I have eight mana, so I could hit for six. I could do six damage to everything on the board, all right? Um, which is very, this is very good. Now I have a lot less life, so it's very dangerous. All right, I'm gonna move this over here. So since I have Fault Line, but he doesn't know I have Fault Line, what I'm gonna do is just suicide attack with this thing. He, he has no clue that all these creatures are going to die anyway. Now why would I kill all these creatures? Because I have the rock slide elemental. So if I can do just enough damage to kill all these other creatures, um, you know, the rock slides will survive because they're already pretty big. You know, I could do 2 damage to everything, 3 damage, 4 damage, 5 damage, 6 damage to everything. Um, just blow the shit off of everything. I'm going to attack with these guys, see if he blocks. It's suicide, right? But my rock slides you know, they're like 4-4. Four, four. Alright, so these two creatures are both going to die. Now my rock slides are going to get pumped up to like 6-6 six, six or something like that. Um, they're pretty big. Now one of them has an arrest. Okay, now he's going to think that it's free win time, alright? So as far as he knows, the game is his. Because if he attacks everything, yeah, he'll lose two guys because I can only block two guys. But I can't block all of his guys. I cannot block all his creatures, which means he would definitely get like 5 damage through. Um, fault line is an instant. Very important to keep in mind. It's an instant. So what I'm really looking for is if he tries to attack or if he tries to equip something. Like, like he's going to try to move this machete to this other guy to make his toughness like way bigger. I'm just checking the toughness here. Yes, he's going to give it plus two, plus one. So before that resolves, before it gets increased toughness, it's time to fault line. Um, and just, uh, no, okay. It's not time to fault line. Oh, because it would survive. All right, it, it, you know, whatever. It didn't change anything. It, it only has four toughness still. So the fault line will still get it. If, if he had made it so it would have been so strong, the fault line would have destroyed it, then it would not have destroyed it, then I would have gone for it. He's going to attack with justice, and now it's time to fault line. So let's just pump this up here. Four damage to everything. And this is when things get hilarious. So he had the, he had the whole fucking game. This is going to take a while to resolve. Um, and I do recommend, in terms of your settings, that you turn off you turn off auto resolve, okay? So that if you need to respond to something like this as an instant, you can pause the timer and do it. You want to turn off simplified targeting, so you can kill your own creatures if you have to. Oh, is he gonna disconnect on me? Is he? Nope. Okay. Yeah, um, these guys are going to become like 14-14 creatures because we literally killed everything on the board. Now, I'm at 3 health and he's at 7. The difference is I have a 14-14 creature on the board. Um, so, unless he... Oh, I mean, he definitely he has two cards in hand. Hopefully he has something to play and he's got a lot of equipment. Uh, I can just imagine he's like shooting himself right now. 14. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is... Beautiful, and that's why I love red magic. So he's gonna play his creature. Now I'm gonna attack, and he's gonna have to block. He's not gonna have a choice. Now I don't. Why would he pass his turn without equipping all the equipment? I don't. I have no clue. Why would he not equip all the equipment? Um, should I equip this equipment? It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna attack. So unless he has some amazing card, I don't know about. Nope. He's just gonna have to block. Throw this guy away. And the uh, <laughs> the rock slide elementals get even bigger. Um, see, this is why I like it. See, this is why I mean when I said that I was playing this as a long haul game, and I specifically did not play that goblin until after combat. And I know there's no creatures in his deck that have um, haste, but he might have had some tr trick. I think there's some kind of card that gives creatures protection or something. He might have been like, oh, well now he doesn't have any blockers, and that seals the deal. Well everyone, thanks for watching and tune in next time for more Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012.